Hi, I'll be explaining how super tokens works. So let's start with a scenario. So you have uh, a front end app. So this is like either a React app or a mobile app or you know Vue, Angular, just vanilla JS, uh, any of these things. And this is deployed on example.com, right? So you have your front end app uh, and this could either be React, um, vanilla JS, React Native, Vue, uh, and you know so on. Um, and you have an API layer. Let's call this API dot example dot com. And this uh, could be a Node app or a Python, Golang, you know, and and several more. Um, and this is kind of the setup that you have with these domains. Um, so the first thing you want to do is integrate a front-end SDK into your front-end app. Um, so we have support for, for React, Vanilla.js, and React Native. Um, for Vue and others, you can use the Vanilla.js SDK. Um, and uh, we provide UI just for React apps at the moment. Um, so if you're using Vanilla.js or React Native, you should build your own UI. Um, and um, you know you can call the APIs yourself using Axios or Fetch. Um, the SDKs that we provide for these um, do only session management. So that's something I'll explain uh, shortly. Um, and you need to also integrate a backend SDK. So we have one for, for Node.js, for Python, and Golang. Um, and what the backend SDK does is it provides you with a middleware function, and that function will expose a few APIs for the front end to call. So for example, um, we expose slash auth slash sign in, slash auth slash sign up, um, slash auth slash sign out and so on. Um, this is the API base path and, and you can change this to whatever you like but by default it's, it's slash auth. Um, also the APIs we expose vary based on the login type you, you want to use. So for example these are exposed through the email password recipe but if you're using something like passwordless or social login, you might have other APIs that that, that are exposed by the middleware. Um, so these APIs are supposed to be called by the front end. Um, so that's and and you can call them using Axios or Fetch or using a vanilla JS SDK. Um, and if you're using React and you're using a pre-built UI, um, our UI calls these APIs automatically. Um, one, one important point is that these APIs are exposed on your domain. So um, on the front end, if you want to query these, you will have to query api.example.com slash auth slash sign in. Um, yep. So for these APIs to work, it, they need to talk to a database. Um, and that's where uh, the third part of our um, solution comes in, which is the super tokens core. This is an HTTP service uh, which you can self-host or use um, a managed service for. And this exposes um, a few APIs as well. So for example, slash recipe, slash sign in, slash recipe, slash sign up, and so on. Um, the backend APIs uh, in turn, when they are, when when they call, they will call the cores uh, these APIs. Um, these APIs then talk to a database. So you have a database, um, which uh, which is um, we support SQL databases and we have partial support for MongoDB. Um, but primarily, it's it's SQL. Um, and, and this could either be your own database if you're using self-hosted version of the core or um, if you are using a managed service, this database is um, also hosted by us. Um, so these APIs then talk to 
this database um, to like save all the information um, and query the database, uh, which in turn, uh, you know, helps um, like these APIs would then reply to the back end, uh, back end APIs, which then replies to the front end. Um, so that's essentially how super tokens, this is the architecture of super tokens. Um, so three SDKs, so three parts, one is the front end SDK, the back end SDK and the super tokens core. Um, in the next section, we can talk about how an example flow, like a sign in flow would work. So we we'll talk about what happens when you call the sign in API, how the session cookies are generated and um, where they're saved. Thank you.